What is up guys, Jake from OneHive here with the war recap video of the week one CWL Invite League playoffs, OneHive versus Clantanamo Bay. And unfortunately, uh, that's it. OneHive is out of the CWL season two, uh, put out in round one by Clantanamo Bay on a tiebreaker percentage win. Um, congratulations to Clantanamo Bay. Awesome win. They deserved it. They just outplayed us. One hive, um, just you know, we, we really did show up pretty well this war. I think I don't think it was a bad war, uh, but just like in week eleven of the regular season, we had three dip fails and lost on percentage. Exact, it played out the exact same way as uh, the the last week of the regular season. We had a town hall ten v ten three star right at the end to put us uh, put us close to give us a chance to tie. Um, but just too many, too many dip fails, and they got us on percentage, just barely, man. I think it's like 0.4%. Uh, but there you see the maps. Uh, the nines did well. The 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 10 v 10s were really good. We had four 10 v 10 triples. You're going to see each one of those today. Um, so everybody did well. It's just when you, in this this type of level, this competition, you can't have that many dip fails. I'm not blaming our 11s. I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it just is what it is. Um, you know, Clinton Bay went seven for nine. We went um, or seven for ten. Excuse me. Why wow, I keep saying that? Clinton Bay went, went nine for ten, and we went seven for ten. So uh, just that's the difference, man. Uh, but good job to everybody. One have great season. It really was a good season for us. Um, just didn't wasn't wasn't our time. I don't know. We have to get together in the off season, get things shaped back up. Hopefully for season three. All right, but let's check out some awesome attacks. Chris, this is the one at the, at the end here that was just a beauty of an attack. You guys are gonna love this one. I promise. Um, something a little bit different than what you've seen before, I think, at Town Hall uh, 10. Uh, but what he did here was just drop the queen down. It has a couple healers on her to so keep her going. So a little bit of a queen walk here. And then drops a couple golems in with the bowlers. Uh, creates that second part of the funnel and gets ready to push in towards his base. His goal here, he wants to get in, get deep into the base. Obviously, it's a bowler attack. I mean, there's no witch. It's just a bowler attack. Mass bowler, I guess. Whatever you want to call it. Go bow. And... Uh, it, he wants to push into this base really strong, really deep into the middle. He's got the double jump. He wants to go right through the core. His whole goal here is taking that first Infernal Tower out quickly and then making sure that uh, that balloon gets taken out because it needs to go down. The Queen's going to go to the bottom. He doesn't want her going up to the top here. He wants her staying away from that Lava Hound, which is smart. Uh, so good job there. She gets a little low, but she gets a chance to get healed back up here. Now, I was watching this on the stream, and I thought, man, this is, there's just no way here. But I did not notice that Golem right there. Look at the value he gets for this golem and these wizards. It's unfreaking believable. The tanking it does, the, the just the damage it absorbs, it wraps around the base and continues to tank on. Just a brilliant move on that in my in my mind. Uh, putting that down there, I don't see a lot of people do that. Just use a golem and some DPS behind it um, on the side of a base. It's not a normal thing, but it worked perfectly in this in this scenario. Now you see the queen is locked on to that Lava Hound. She does have her ability, so he can pop it once the Lava Hound pops. But again, this golem is still doing work. It's wrapping around the base now. The few bowlers in the middle are taking out a few of those last few defenses, and the wizards are still following up this golem. Unbelievable. There you see the queen's ability popped, uh, gets through that, takes out that Tesla, and now she has a chance to keep it going. We'll go times two here. Um, look up there. Golemite still doing work, triggering traps. Uh, bowler just went down in the core there. But that is that with that last golemite just dying as the last defense uh, dies. That bowler or that that golem MVP man MVP of that attack. I thought it was brilliant. Awesome attack by Chris. All right, let's drop down one. Check out Ludo. He did get a six pack, and you can see him back to back here. So nice job to Ludo. Nineteen ninety nine. Shout out to him. Awesome war. Just an awesome war for him. Uh, drops a quake in the quarters to soften things up a little bit, and then he's going to start down here at the bottom. Uh, start creating his funnel. Actually, starts at the top, starts creating his funnel. Got the king down, a few wizards down on that one. Uh, just letting things develop here, letting things set up. That king, his job, his whole job is funnel creation here. No, no real goal for him other than trash buildings. So I also think about the other attack on this one. Uh, queen coming in right behind there, letting that king do the tanking, start clearing out these trash buildings, and now the queen's going to step up and start taking out some of these defenses. Here come the wall breakers, nicely done there, opens up that compartment, pops the king's ability to go ahead and make that funnel even wider to where the queen is going to go into the core here. He wants to get in, take out that first infernal tower, get it out of the way. Uh, the, the defending queen needs to get taken care of as well. Obviously, that's a big, uh, big target when you're talking about we were talking about uh, an air attack coming in like this, and there she is. He pops the queen's ability, uh, got the poison down, uh, a few more shots there, one more, boom, enemy queen is down. Uh, the, the balloon's going to go down to the poison, and the queen is not going to pop the lava hound. So absolutely perfect opener here. Everything went right for him. Now he's going to come in from the side, uh, pulls that 
pulls that uh, lava hound away from the core. He does not want his exploding lava hounds uh, to, to pups to get on that and take it out. He wants to get it out of the, out of the site. So perfectly done there. Uh, Ludo just with a beautiful attack. Now it's all about deployment, spell placement, timing, and his timing is spot on. But obviously the next threat here is these uh, air defense and infernal tower sort of in this one area. So he wants to get into him very quickly. He's got the hay spells down and it looks like everything's going to wrap around, but his timing and his deployment is perfect. You see right here as the balloons start to wrap around, boom, that last outside defense goes down and they rush right to that infernal tower. It goes down. Now he's got the heal spell for this back side where these uh, wizard towers are all grouped up. Uh, you see a couple of uh, air skeletons coming out there, but he had a few back end loons as well. We'll go times two here. Just enough juice to get it done. It was close, but a beautiful attack. Absolutely spot on. Uh, I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you can take out an inferno tower, the queen, make sure nothing in the CC that's going to harm you like baby dragons or anything, then you've got a chance at Town Hall 10 with a loon attack with proper deployment, spell placement, all of that stuff. That's exactly what Ludo did here twice. We'll see one more in just a second. The Lava Hound just exploded, but too little, too late. It's a three-star. Excellent attack. All right, dropping down to number 20 is Ludo's second attack. We'll check it out. Uh, same sort of thing. He's, same sort of game plan as far as like army composition. Uh, he wants to get in with his, with his king and queen. He wants to take out an Inferno Tower, that defending queen. Um, get what he can there for extra value, but that's the main goal. And then he's going to take out the rest of the base with his air attack. You see he does have a skeleton spell queued up there to help out with that queen as well. So the funnel's starting to be created here. King's down. A uh, few wizards go check out some of those army camps and whatnot to just make it a little wider, a little, little more security. That he knows he's not going to get walked around here. Pops the king's ability to get that high HP town hall out of the way, and then it's just going to be wall breakers. Get that queen in range of this infernal tower. There you see as soon as all that point defense gets targeted by that king, sends in the wall breakers just enough to get it opened up. Uh, and now that with the queen's ability, he's pretty much assured he's going to get that first infernal tower taken care of. So uh, the defending queen is there, and he has several point defense on his queen here. So he's going to stretch it as far as he can, as long as he can. Right there, pops it takes down this Inferno Tower, and now he's going to be able to step up and get a few shots on to that enemy queen, but she's not going to go down. I uh, actually didn't get much damage on her at all, but uh, the damage is done there. He's got it. He's got the, the skeletons for the queen, so that's not a big issue. Just has to wait till she locks onto a Lava Hound and get those on top of her. That, with the pups, will end up taking her out. So here he comes. Look at all of those air skeletons. Wow, there is a bunch of them. Uh, they're moving their way through the base, taking out all those traps and those air skeletons. Luckily, they are targeting the Lava Hound and not his balloons at this point. There's the Rage. The skeleton spell goes down. The enemy queen goes down. And now it's just about pathing and getting to that last Inferno Tower. Boom, right there. Plenty of loons still up. He's got a couple for the backside. He does have a Rage and a Heal for these backside loons. That is great spell usage. Uh, got a lot of value out of that. Put it down basically together. Got his loons healed back up and keeping them moving quickly and attacking quickly. Getting uh, those last few defenses taken care of. He does have one loon in the bag still for cleanup there. That's nice. Uh, but definitely going to be a three-star six-pack for Ludo. Amazing job uh, to him this war for sure. All right, we'll fast forward here and get done with the cleanup. And then back to the last attack. And we will wrap this one up. Boom, three-star for my boy Ludo. All right, last one here was on 21, their lowest Town Hall 10, and Nellis got it done for us with another air attack. You're going to see a little bit of the same thing here. Drops the queen down, got a queen wall going, going to just start letting her take out the trash bins, work her way into that first row of defenses, that first line. Uh, Tesla pop in there, some extra value, but he's got the rages, no big deal. Can rage up those healers and that queen and keep her up and healthy. So right there it comes down. Uh, she gets a little bit low but just in time to get her held right back up and take out, what, three, four defenses already, so she's getting good value out of that queen. The king steps up, but under that rage, it's not going to be an issue. All there is is a little bit of splash damage, uh, one point defense in the king. That is no trouble at all. Uh, she works her way down. She's working towards these, these archer towers, working towards that air defense, so really, again, huge value out of this queen walk for sure. You see the Inferno Tower is only level one, and that's going to play a big role in this attack. Uh, the, one of the reasons it was successful for sure. King's on the town hall, just making that funnel a bit wider, wants to make sure everything's going in here. Goes ahead and drops the rage during this uh, queen engagement, which is good because he knows he's going to have to get her out of the way. This queen is going to get locked onto this lava hound, but look at her health. Look how low she is already because of that expo. Uh, super low. Goes ahead and pops the queen's ability, but man, look how low she went. I mean, went low there. Finally, the, uh, the, the no damage coming in, the, the healers are able to catch up. 
Uh, but without that, it definitely would not have been a three-star. But there's the jump spell. You see the queen starting to wrap around. But now she has no ability uh, and almost in range of this Inferno Tower. And with the Expo on, she's going to go down pretty quick. So her health starts getting low. The, the healers are getting pushed back, but they can't do anything anyways. You see the air attack already started. But watch this queen. Because it's a level one Inferno Tower, it just gets it done. Uh, now she's able to heal back up. That was huge in this attack. The pathing uh, towards that second Inferno Tower was pretty easy, straightforward, because of the queen's uh, defenses she took out early. Got those wounds in there quickly, took it out and now it's just a matter of overpowering the space with that back end heal for those two wizard towers keep those loons moving and again with that queen still kicking uh, he's got plenty of cleanup plenty of juice here nicely done by Nellis getting us our fourth three star of the war so again 10 v 10s were on point it just we just slipped up too many times uh, we've learned our lesson I think so hopefully that will be a focus of ours going into season three again congratulations to Emerald Bay I know we gave him a hard time Lady B and all them but it was all in fun we knew they were a good clan we knew they were going to bring it uh, good luck to them in round two be looking out for the video of the forecast for round two I will be putting that out uh, and I will be doing some streaming for round two so look forward to that as well hope you guys like the video until next time Jake from One Hive doing my best to help you guys suck less